history is, is somewhat obscure. Um, legend has it that he was a, he was a performer and uh, he was doing a tour in either Cincinnati, Ohio, or Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, he witnessed a slave um, doing a dance that went, I wheel about and turn about and do just so. Every time I wheel about, I jump Jim Crow. And Daddy Rice stole that refrain and he used it in a song called Jump Jim Crow that was published in 1828. And Daddy Rice went on to have international success. Um, and that's a drawing of him as Jim Crow. He put on blackface and these raggedy old clothes and was a minstrel performer. And this became the first form of mass entertainment in America. I find it an interesting parallel, mass entertainment, mass incarceration, and they both have such racial elements to them. In 2013, I was a 23-year-old activist who was sort of looking for the thing that drew me in the most. Um, I had been very involved with the Occupy Wall Street movement, and I came back to New York. I was living in LA at the time, and um, I was listening to a lot of Pink Floyd. <laughs> Anyone familiar with The Wall? Really good album. And I was also reading a lot, and I read Michelle's book, The New Jim Crow. And it really inspired me. And it inspired me because the history was so effed up, but also because I had close personal experiences with folks who've been incarcerated. One fellow in particular I was very close with, he was named Alexander Pridgen, and um, he passed away in 2015. But I was lucky enough to make a film about him back in 2009. That's me, I'm like 19. And that's Alex in the middle. And uh, he had lived quite a, quite a life. He was Muhammad Ali's bodyguard at one point. Um, I could go on, but I won't. Um, the project began as something that I thought I would pass off to someone who'd been in prison or who was a black activist. Um, but the more I started to talk to folks on the inside, they would all tell me, this is your passion. Um, the first couple of years were really about me just building trust with people who were in prison and people formerly incarcerated and writing to a ton of people and doing a lot of reading and research. These are, this is basically a picture of my desk, <laughs> a stylized version. Um, in 2013, I started reaching out to Warren Correctional, which is a closed security state prison in Ohio. And after two years of bugging them, I finally got access. And that was when I met my co-producer and engineer, Dr. Israel, who's been my co-producer and engineer since then. And these are just some quick shots of us at the facility with Mark and Anne and Charles and Deontay there. Um, from these recordings, we put out an EP, which we have here uh, today. I would love for you to listen to it. I have it queued up, so you can just go over and listen to it. There's some headphones. Uh, we recorded also formerly incarcerated artists for these recordings, so this is B.L. Sherell here, who's out of Philly, and Apostle Heath Lois from New York, Carl Dukes and James, a.k.a. Ghost of Guitars, also both from New York. Um, we funded this through a Kickstarter campaign, and we put it out. Um, the EP follows this... Uh, three-act trajectory that the full-length LP is going to have, pre-prison act one, prison act two, re-entry act three. And this album is about putting people in the shoes of those who have lived this experience. Um, we also put out a book in conjunction with some music videos. This is a still from Headed to the Streets. Um, it was written up in Rolling Stone a few months ago. I'm going to play a little clip of it. wanted to give you a little sample of Anthony and B.L. Sherelle. Wait a minute. Yes. Where's the end of the song? You I told mean, him five I'm, minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have minutes. <laughs> if, with your permission in the audiences, can I play the whole video or what? It was so much better than last year's song. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. You guys can check out the... Um, you can check out the video on our website and on Rolling Stone, so I'm just going to rock with this. I don't want to interrupt her much too much more. Um, so we have, well, I'm a polite New Yorker, so I need to say that. <laughs> you guys don't think New York is polite, but we can be. Um, we also put out, yes, we can, thank you. <laughs> 
We also put out a book in conjunction. It's currently out of print. I have one copy left. Please feel free to check it out back there. Um, I do have a list for back ordering it, so feel free to put your name on that list and I will definitely follow up. Um, the full length album will be out in late 2020. It's gonna be all original songs, a double album. We'll be doing an LP art book for that in conjunction. And I would love to do a documentary component because I feel that there is a lot of history behind this project that people need to know about. The reason that I started this off with asking the question, who is Jim Crow, is because I think probably 90% of Americans don't realize that it started from a song. And I think it can would be very interesting if my project helped to put an end to this racist and fucked up ideology that America has. Um, these are some of the folks who I'm going to be working with going forward. On my way back to New York, um, I'm going to be at a rehearsal in South Carolina. Actually, two rehearsals at two separate prisons. One is a female facility, one is a men's. Um, this is Tamika Brown. She's the musical director at the women's facility. Um, back in April, thanks to Claudia Whitman. Over, Claudia, can you wave your hand over there? So here's just a brief example of how community can help. I met Claudia last year at this conference. She told me about a fellow named Michael Tennyson who plays guitar a year and a half later. Here I am. That's like community building in action in my opinion. So thank you, Claudia. Um, these are some photos from the, the sessions. Some of the artists. When did you start this project, Yuri? When did you start it? 2013. Little by little, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so Tamika Cole out of Birmingham, Alabama. Wrote to her for several years, spoke at her parole hearing. She made parole. We've been close since she's been out as well. I'm about to see her on the way back to New York as well. And these are some of the folks that I work with, and there's me and Doc in there too, across the country, both in and out. And uh, some of the impacts, I haven't slept so well in 20 years. Michael Tennyson said that, serving a life sentence, never gonna get out, I think five life sentences. Kevin said this was the best experience of my life. Um, Anthony McKinney was interviewed by Rolling Stone, which I think is pretty cool. You know, serving a life sentence for a murder he has maintained, he hasn't committed, um, has been fighting that case since day one. And I think most importantly though, it's built a community that includes folks inside, formerly inside, but also their their families and activists across the country. On my way here, I stopped by Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I met Charles Williams' father. Charles Williams um, is the, the fellow who is on the cover of the album, and he's holding the album cover. Um, we had breakfast, and it was great to meet him, and he was just blown away by what his son has done inside and how much the project has helped him. This is Valerie Seely and her daughter, Aisha. Valerie did 19 to life sentence. She was granted clemency by New York Governor Cuomo in uh, late 2016. And um, I recently formed a nonprofit for this. I'm trying to do it not just street legal, but legit, and uh, really get major funding to make this happen and to do a documentary component as well in the art book. This is our mission statement here, to provide formerly and currently incarcerated musicians a platform for their voices to be heard through high quality multimedia art formats. Um, I've been working as a carpenter through this whole project, basically full time. That's how I've been funding it and through the crowdfunding stuff. And um, I just left that job. I'm just doing this full time now and off savings and like real part time gigs. Seeking large-scale funding. Um, I want to get the Grammy that Maxwell Melvins and the Lifers Group didn't get. Maxwell Melvins and Lifers Group were nominated for a Grammy back in 91. Maxwell, who's a good friend of mine and is on the LP, um, was serving a life sentence and he started the Lifers Group. And they were nominated for a Grammy Hip Hop Group. Check them out. Um, that's about it, guys. Thank you so much. Please follow